So we now are recording this meeting. The slides are going to be available right after uh, the presentation on the website that we've been directing you to uh, over the last couple of days at TLS Webinars website. Uh, and the recording will be available uh, probably within 24 hours after that. It depends a little bit on Zoom's downloading speeds. Uh, so welcome to day three of the course design essentials. Today we're going to be looking at strategies and next steps and we're so happy to have you with us today. My name is Jenny Ferris. I'm an academic associate at Teaching and Learning Services and I'm joined today by my colleagues Carolyn Samuel, Mariella Tovar, uh, Rose Elikanachi and Mariette Zanopoulos. So we're very happy to have you with us today and we'll jump right in. So this course design model is probably starting to look familiar to you. Uh, and over the course of the last couple of days, we've explored various elements of it. So now we're day three in our three part series. And on day one, we looked at learning outcomes. Your preparation activity was looking at context for your course. And there were some really interesting conversations that came up about that yesterday in the afternoon session. In yesterday's session, we explored assessment. So thinking about how your students will know the extent to which the outcomes, the learning outcomes have been achieved. And today we're going to be exploring strategies. Uh, so now we're looking at what engagement and interaction activities will support learning. To do so, we're going to be focusing our session with these two session outcomes. Uh, so thinking about how yesterday we were looking at assessment, Today, we'll be looking at building on some of those assessment ideas by exploring key ideas that can inform your choice of instructional strategies and identifying instructional strategies that can help students practice and get feedback so they can successfully complete their course assignments. So that idea that by having practice and feedback along the way, they can do well on those course assessments as they come up and really get a sense of where they're at in their own learning and understanding. And by the end of today, you'll be equipped to complete your course alignment plan. So we often ask, as we mentioned yesterday, we tend to ask a lot of questions along the way, reflective questions to guide our thinking. And one question is how can students practice and get feedback so they can successfully complete their course assessments? And what we'd like to suggest is that strategies uh, can be a bridge between learning outcomes and assessments. I love metaphors. So this idea of a bridge to connect two elements is something that appealed to me. Uh, and this sort of builds on uh, the student video that we shared with you yesterday, where the student spoke about how the process of evaluation isn't just the exam, but sort of these ideas of mini exams and exercises along the way where students can really practice and get feedback and see whether they completely understand what they thought they understood. Um, so that idea of mini exams all the time without a grade is very much consistent with the idea of formative assessment and linking to instructional strategies, how we can support students in their learning. I'd like to also mention that when we think about instructional strategies, it can also be an interesting time to think about what tools uh, we might use to support students in their learning and how we can build in opportunities to practice not only towards learning outcomes but towards facility and comfort uh, with the tools that we're using to support learning. So I wanted to ask you uh, what is one instructional strategy that you have found works well in remote teaching and I'm going to ask you to put it in the chat but not right away. Uh, I'd like you to think about it for about 30 seconds or so and then I'll invite you to share it uh, in a phrase or a sentence in the chat. And I'll explain why I'm asking you to wait uh, in a minute. Okay, so now that you've had a little bit of thinking time, 
I'd like to invite you to share in the strat, uh, sorry, share in the chat. Uh, what is one instructional strategy that you have found works well in remote teaching? This could be a phrase or a short sentence. Great. So peer to peer learning, creating separate meeting rooms for students to work in smaller groups. Absolutely making short videos before class and reverse the classroom. Nice, so thinking about not only the time in the class, but also out of the time, out of class time, and what students can be doing and what you as an instructor are doing at both times. Polls, yes. So getting a sense of where people are at, what we understand, what questions might arise. Making sketches to illustrate what they have learned. Nice, so getting a, a more gestural uh, vocabulary in there, thinking about not only using our words, but also using images. Recorded lectures allow students to review material and allow those who missed catches to catch up. Absolutely. So thinking about what things can support students uh, in, in catching up or in reviewing as well. Using online fun quizzes like Kahoot, so different opportunities for engagement with students and getting a sense, say, through polling or other sources uh, about their understanding and collaborative whiteboard use. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, the reason that I asked you to, and feel free to keep those ideas coming as you, uh, as you think of other instructional strategies that you found work well in remote teaching. The reason I asked you to wait uh, a minute uh, before sharing them uh, is actually a, a instructional strategy in itself called the think break. Uh, so it's this idea of, you know, taking a moment to gather our thoughts. Uh, Mariette has just put a, a link to that in the, in the chat. So thank you for that um to so that we don't necessarily get distracted by other people's ideas it's sort of the online equivalent if you will of posing a question but then waiting a few seconds before calling on somebody who has their hand raised so it gives folks an opportunity to think things through uh and perhaps not get distracted by other responses in that thinking process so we look forward over the course of the next 45 minutes or so to giving other opportunities for thinking about um, instructional strategies and sort of meta level uh, design ideas for strategies to support students learning. Which brings us, of course, to learning itself. Uh, so when we think about learning, there's just such an incredible deal of research out there. And we tried to sum it up as much as we could, given that this is, you know, we're a webinar and we realize that there's limited time. Uh, into three key points that we find helpful to consider when preparing courses and designing courses. So literature shows that students learn best when they understand the purpose and value of the learning experience. So when it's not just, please learn this because I asked you to, but when there's a real purpose, when it can be applied, when the value uh, that they understand it to have is consistent with their own values, when they see the opportunity to uh, either have a real world application when it's very meaningful them, meaningful to them, uh, when they're able to link it to other uh, elements, they, other things that they've known already. Uh, so just really communicating clearly the purpose and value of the learning experience itself helps students to learn well. Also, having the opportunity to practice what they are learning and receive feedback. So this will sound quite familiar from our discussion yesterday of assessment, but really the opportunity to not just feel like you're learning in a bubble, but to apply, to practice, to get a sense of from either from yourself through self-assessment, uh, from a peer, through peer feedback, peer assessment, or from the instructor, or perhaps even from somebody beyond the course entirely uh, on what they're learning, how they're doing, how they're pulling in new ideas to what they've known in the past. And practice certainly can look you know, like we have here, like a, a medical example in a real world situation, but it can also look like writing. There are so many different ways that we can think about practice. There are many, it takes many forms. So I didn't want to limit it to the idea of experiential. <coughs> Looking at again, examples of peer feedback and then reflection. Uh, so thinking about how we can build in opportunities, not only for application for practice and feedback, but also for reflection to say, okay, what do I understand? How did that go? Now that we've done that, what's next? Uh, and that's something that we try to do in our webinars as well. So you'll see that we have an opportunity for reflection towards the end. Uh, and when students are able to do these things to understand the purpose, practice what they're learning and receive feedback, 
and reflect on their learning process itself, it helps them to learn well, it helps them to correct misconceptions along the way, to organize new knowledge, to become aware of things that they hadn't considered before. So keeping these things in mind, we wanted to give you some time for individual reading. Uh, sometimes Mariella talks about class time as a superpower uh, in that it's a time where we can really show students what we value and uh, have sort of some boundaries so we can inform uh, the, the learning experience and how that looks. So we wanted to take some, I realize we're not in class, we're in a webinar, uh, but we wanted to take some time now and invite you to open up the resource document. Uh, we have about five pages of reading we're not expecting you to read all five pages right now. I want to make that clear because that's not a fair, that would be taking more time than we are able to do. But what we'd like to ask you to do is to read your choice of two to three of the seven key ideas, which start on pages eight, on page eight of your resource document. Uh, so Mariella has dropped that link in the chat as well. It's possible that by this point in the webinar series, you already have a local copy. So please open that up. And uh, the seven key ideas for exploring instructional strategies are listed, all seven of them, at the very top of that page. So you can choose a couple that pique your interest. And we'll take some silent reading time. Uh, and as we mentioned yesterday, it's always good to have a question or a task in mind when reading. So we'd like you, as you're reading, to select one key idea you would like to discuss further with colleagues. We have some guiding questions there on the screen. So at this point, uh, you're welcome to turn your cameras off if you'd like during the reading. We'll take seven minutes for individual reading. Uh, I'm going to stop talking so you can focus uh, and I'll give you uh, a one minute warning when we're about to come back. Thank you.
luck for your patients. So now that you've had some time to uh, explore a couple of those seven key ideas uh, and to gather your thoughts in terms of one key idea you would like to discuss further with colleagues, we are going to go into breakout rooms. Uh, and for this, we're going to do it a little bit differently than we did uh, in the previous webinars. But for those of you who were at yesterday's uh, afternoon uh, connection session, uh, this will feel a little bit familiar to you because what we're going to do is we're going to use the self-selected breakout room function on Zoom. Uh, so I'm actually going to stop sharing the slides now. So I can see you all. Uh, so what we're going to do um, is to uh, give you the option to choose which of the breakout rooms you'd like to choose uh, to participate in uh, based on which key idea you'd like to explore further. Uh, so uh, Mariette has put the list of the breakout rooms into the chat. So for key idea one, that goes to breakout room one, key idea two goes to breakout room two as well, and, and so on and so forth. Um, what I'm going to do, uh, because we had, it was a bit glitchy yesterday, uh, we're going to do this in two parts. Uh, first, I'm going to open the breakout rooms and some of you will likely see an invitation to choose the room of your choice. So if you see that invitation come up, please click it and you will be connected to that room. If you don't see that invitation come up, what I'll ask you to do is just in the chat, write the number of the room that you would like to be assigned to in the chat. Uh, and my colleague Rose and I will send you there uh, as quickly as we can. So it might take a couple of minutes for people to arrive in the breakout rooms, but once in the breakout rooms, we'll have a full 10 minutes anyways for uh, discussion. Uh, and I'm just going to ask uh, Mariette to please include the discussion prompt uh, in the chat as well. So people will have that um, once they're in the rooms. Uh, it's The prompt is discuss why you chose this key idea and how you might implement it. So now I'm going to open those rooms. So some of you will be receiving an invitation uh, and for those who don't get a little pop-up invitation, please just write the number of the room you'd like to be assigned to in the chat and we'll get you there as quickly as we can. Okay, so for uh, Valerio and Gausu, uh, if you if you have uh, not yet, if you could just please indicate in the chat which of the seven rooms you'd like to be assigned to. That would be great. We can send and, you on your way there. And Jenny, we have two rooms that have one person in them. Okay, so, um, oh, and <laughs> it looks like one of the people might have come back. <laughs> would um, you like a reassignment, Gil? Uh, yes, I'm, I was the only one there. In room okay. seven. Um, I guess I can go to room uh, three. Okay, sounds good. Uh, and you actually may be able to choose that yourself. Um, oh, okay, let me see. Okay, hold on, hold on. Uh, no, I'm still assigned to breakout room seven. Okay. So you're going to have to reassign me. I just did that. Okay, let me, here we go. Ah, great. Thank you very much. Is 
I'm just going to pause the recording for now. Welcome back, everyone. I hope you had some wonderful conversations in your focused uh, breakout rooms. Looks like we have just a few more people arriving, so I'll wait for a moment. Great, so welcome back. Uh, thank you for engaging in those focused conversations around these different key ideas for considering your strategies. For the next portion of this morning's webinar, I'm very pleased to hand things over to my colleague, Carolyn Samuel. Okay, thank you very much, Jenny. And uh, just before I put anything back on the screen, I want to, to say a couple of words about the strategies. So these seven key ideas that you were looking at just now and discussing with colleagues can be very helpful when planning the overarching design of your course. But when it comes to planning specific class sessions, the bullet points um, under each of those broad key ideas can also be helpful. And there's another resource that we'd like to share with you for planning individual sessions. And this is the instructional strategies section of the TLS website. So I think, uh, let me just see. Um, yeah, so Mariette has put a link in the chat and I am going to share my screen. I'm just gonna put this up on the screen. Let me get that here. Okay, and I always like to ask for a sign from somebody that what you're seeing is what you should be seeing. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Jenny. So we have the TLS Instructional Strategies website on the screen. And these strategies have, I'll just scroll down a bit so you see a little bit more there. So these strategies have been grouped in response to some common questions that we receive from instructors. So um, some time ago, we collected uh, a number of questions, grouped them and thought, how can we use this to help guide instructors with finding strategies that will help them um, help them with the teaching strategies to help them like bridge that gap between um, the learning outcomes and the assessment. And that's what we're gonna move to in just a second. So the, um, the instructional strategies that are listed here on this page are not limited to the one question though. So we had to find an organizing principle, but it's important to know that the strategies can actually serve multiple purposes. So don't, nobody should feel limited by the way they're, they're organized here. So they can be uh, appropriate for different purposes. And I'm just gonna go to one area here because I want to point out that we have indicated on uh, each of the pages that remote adaptations are possible. And many of these strategies will work well in my courses discussions and they can work in Zoom. So not all work in both, you'll have to decide which ones will work well in my courses and which ones will work well in Zoom. But um, that's just something important to keep in mind that they can be adaptive. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take this off for a second and let's come back here. I want to go into the slideshow and okay there we go so we have included this slide in the slideshow because the slides will be made available to you so we want to have this here as you know a record of what we've talked about but i am going to go on to the next slide and we're going to ask you to do a little bit of practice so this content might look familiar from yesterday's webinar on assessment and we'd like you to think about the idea of strategies as a bridge. And we have a question at the top of the screen, what strategies could bridge this learning outcome and assessment? So we'd like you to draw on ideas that um, perhaps came from the reading you just, at, you just did and from your group discussion. And um, I'd like you to think about different strategies that we could have here in the middle. What could we put here to bridge, to create the bridge from learning out, the learning outcome to the assessment? So students will be able to apply theoretical concepts to real world problems. And the assessment is a take home exam 
where students are given three scenarios that illustrate current societal problems. And they're asked to explain the scenarios through the lens of a theory discussed during the course. So now we're going to ask you to put some ideas in the chat. I don't know what will come to mind, but different things that you could use as your instructional strategy that would allow students practice and feedback so that they can actually succeed at the assessment. I'm just gonna, so when you're ready, you can just start typing ideas in the chat. I'm gonna go back to the website here. Um, there is an option for knowledge application. There are some ideas here. So for the learning outcome and the assessment strategy in question, you could have students do a critical debate. You could have them do simulations. So there are all kinds of things that could be done. And uh, we'd love to see what you come up with. So hoping you'll type something in the chat. This is that awkward moment that we often, we often feel in class too when we ask a question and then we need to allow thinking time. Okay, but we do have something in the chat. So thank you for that short paper that utilizes a theorist to explain um, a current phenomenon. Good idea. Maybe we can get some more. Yes, oral presentations and feedback from students. Absolutely. And it's nice to have the option of doing something written and doing something oral. Yeah, discuss sample scenarios, so important. That way there's no surprise for students when they get to the final assessment, they're gonna have a sense of what it means to do this. And case studies, also a good option. Just looking for any other ideas. Okay, so we've got a few more watching a short documentary followed by a group discussion applying the theory to the documentary. So it's nice to see like repeatedly people are saying applying the theory to something. And again, I love this idea like we've had a written paper, an oral presentation, and now watching a video. So there's so many different ways. Um, COVID-19 versus climate change emergencies, yes, well, that would be context specific, but absolutely. And the idea of using a current event can be very helpful. Prepare small assignments after teaching each theory, um, also giving real world, world scenarios, yeah. Present statistics, yes, that support the principle or show, yeah, nice idea, yeah. Okay, so we've had several really interesting possibilities. And, and for me, what stands out is the variety. And I think we would encourage you with your students to also be thinking in terms of variety so that they can access the, the, the learning in different ways. So that's great, wonderful. Um, I, I think that's pretty much it for practice because your responses give us a sense that you've really understood what was so important for us that you would gain from this session that there needs to be the alignment among these three. And that kind of brings us to um, a reminder here about what the outcomes were for this particular session, which was to explore key ideas that can inform your choice of instructional strategies and identify learning-centered strategies that help students prepare to successfully complete their course assignments. And of course, we are getting to the end of our, our third webinar in the series. So we wanted to remind you of the outcomes for the entire series as well for this course design, course design essential series. And we were hoping that by the end of these three webinars, that you would, and the afternoon sessions ideally too, that you would be able to describe learning-centered course design principles and strategies. And if you recall on the first day, we talked about alignment and we've repeatedly talked about alignment. And we also talked about backward design. So starting with your design at the end of the course. So by the end of the course, students will what? What will they have learned? 
and then apply these principles and strategies to the redesign of your course by developing a course plan with identified learning outcomes, assessments, and instructional strategies, including technology tools. Now, we, we hope that you've been working on your course alignment plan worksheet. Um, we hope it's being filled in along the way. We haven't said a lot about the technologies. Um, I think what I would like to say is that you should be creative with your assessment strategies, be creative with the instructional strategies. Don't feel limited um, by what you know. There might be tools that are available to help you do things that you, you didn't know that you, I, I'm trying to get it, that you might wanna do something and you don't know that the tool is available to do it, but there's a good chance that we can support you with whatever you would like to do with your students. So just keep that in mind. And in fact, um, maybe somebody can drop a link in the chat to the tools table that's on the TLS website. Um, I don't know who's gonna get there first, but we can drop that in. And there's another link that we can drop in. Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna to toggle to this. We have yet another page of um, tools to support teaching and learning. And uh, let me just scroll down. So we have a long list of available tools. We're not saying you need to use all of these. And I will put that link in the chat. I'll do that right now. Um, but we just don't want you to feel limited in any way. And that said, you don't need to try everything. You need to be thinking about your comfort level with the tools as well and balancing that, balancing the creativity with also what you're comfortable with and what you believe your students will be comfortable with. But we can always help you um, getting to know the tools. We'd like to, um, yeah, just remind you here about the course alignment plan that I mentioned before. And on page 14 of the resource document, we're asking you to think particularly of um, preparing students for major assignments and exams, and that would be with the strategies. So we have some guiding questions for you to consider here. And this is page 14. Yeah, we've got the circle coming up to highlight page 14 there. And when you do that thinking, we would ask you to fill in this column here, strategies including low stakes assessments to prepare students. And then we do have that column for learning technologies. You might not be able to do this all at once. We've said before, this is an iterative process. It's, it's not linear. And um, a lot of thinking probably has to go into this and you might come back to it and do some rethinking after a while. This afternoon, we have another connection opportunity. And yesterday we did this with three different questions and uh, participants selected the group they wanted to go to, as Jenny mentioned earlier. We're going to do that again this afternoon, but we have three different questions. So um, we'll keep you in suspense with our three different questions, but we hope you'll join us this afternoon. And of course, the idea is that you keep moving forward with your course alignment plan and you can come with your questions and get feedback and pose, um, pose any questions you like that will support you with course design. Now, we always feel reflection is important. So much thinking has to go into this. And we'd like to ask you, what is your next step as you prepare to teach in the winter term? And we'll give you just a minute to reflect on what we've done over the past three days, these three morning webinars. And if you did attend in the afternoon, what you gained there as well. Um, think about that. Think about what your takeaways are. And with those things in mind, what is your next step as you prepare to teach in the winter term? And we'll ask you to put that in the chat. And I just want to explain why we're asking um, this particular question and, and asking you to put this in the chat, it's that by describing that step now, it's like making a commitment um, so that you don't feel at sea as to what to do next. And also what you put in the chat 
might inspire others. Okay, so we've got something coming in the chat. I'm just taking a look. There was something here I missed before. Okay. Okay, start putting together lectures that you're more comfortable with. Great, yeah. Articulate assignment sheets and new rubrics. We've got more things coming in. Finalize your plan for your course that will include aligned outcomes. Yay, we've got aligned outcomes there with appropriate assessments and preparing lectures. <laughs> okay, I feel like you're feeding us what we really wanna hear, which is great. We hope you do that. Um, complete my learning outcomes, basically this course. Yeah, revise my current course plan to make sure I'm following. Yeah, okay, well, all, all of this is good. Yeah, it does make sense. We think it makes sense. <laughs> Guiding questions for syllabus intro. Do more stretching exercises. Well, I'm not sure if you mean for yourself or with your students, but we would say both. And um, McGill is promoting that. We have, there are videos online for uh, exercises that can be done with students. I don't know if anybody, any of my colleagues can find the athletics and recreation page that has videos that instructors can do with their students in class. If you can find that, can put that in the chat. Okay, all of this is great. This is really nice to see. And we, we have just a few minutes left. I saw that there was a question. Okay, there we go. Sports medicine, clinic, desk stretches, and desk posture. Thank you. That's wonderful. Okay, I do see the question. I'm just going to um, put something else on the screen, and then we will come back to the questions. So I just want to mention this right here. And I know you've seen this slide before, but we have some additional information for you. So in addition to the sessions that are going to be offered next week, we do want to make you aware as well of guidelines that McGill has. I'm just gonna go through our, uh, our web page here. Um, McGill has posted guidelines for instructors and students on remote teaching and Mariette's gonna put that in the chat, um, the link to this page. So this is for winter 2021. We would encourage you to take a look at this page. Um, it has guidelines for instructors, for students, some information about assessment, and then a link to resources. And then under the resources, we have a link here under communication with students to the course outline guide for remote delivery, and it's available in English and in French. And we're putting that link in the chat as well. And another place to get support is the Teaching for Learning blog. So it's TLS's Teaching for Learning blog, which I don't have open on the screen, but I know that Mariette's gonna put the link in the chat as well. So those are just some things we wanted you to keep in mind that there is lots of support available and it's not only in the form of the sessions next week. Please take a look at the guidelines, take a look at the course outline guide and do take a look at the Teaching for Learning blog. Yep, the link is in the chat, that's great. And even subscribe to it. Um, we'd love to have more subscribers to our blog. Okay, so now I am gonna go back to questions and one came through, I'm just scrolling back here. So there isn't a precise percentage. Um, okay, so Jenny has taken care of that question. It will be context dependent, that's lovely. Okay, don't need to address that. Jenny, did any other questions come through? Uh, yes, there was a request given how many links there are, if it would be possible to pull the links together in some way. Oh, lovely. Yeah, let me show you what we've done on the web. Okay, so I'm going to the webinars teaching page. And what we've done for each session is um, include the recording. Well, the recording goes up when it's available. We have the slides here. And then we've got all the links for every session listed underneath. So these were the links that were shown yesterday. And for today's, they'll be posted before the end of the day today. So we'll have an accordion here for resources and all the links that are in the chat are going to be posted here later today. Jenny, did I miss any other questions? Uh, there's one that has just come in, a question on whether we have a workshop on course evaluation by students. 
I think we need more information about that. Gao Su, can you say a little bit more about what you're looking for with respect to course evaluation, like a workshop on course evaluation for students? Uh, how to, um, to maximize the, um, the, uh, the grade that I will receive by student. Okay, so what I'm going to, we don't have a workshop on that per se. I'll tell you what we do have. I'm gonna put something up here. Um, let me just go to Mercury. Okay, so we have a website about course evaluations and I will drop that link in the chat, put that right here. So this is a website um, that has lots of information. And if you go to the instructor section and look through here, there are ways to encourage student uh, participation. And there are, you, you can add questions here. There's a section on adding questions to your course evaluation. And we do have a document on this site. I don't know how quickly I can find the document, but that doesn't matter. It is on this page. We do have a bank of questions. So you can look for that bank of questions to get inspiration for what would be suitable for your course evaluation. In, um, because every instructor can add up to three questions to their own course evaluation. Uh, we do sometimes offer a webinar on creating questions for your course evaluation. I don't know if that will be offered in the winter term. We haven't made those decisions yet, but certainly the information on this website should help you with making some of those decisions. And I see we have another question here, guidelines specifically for graduate courses as distinct from undergraduate courses, credit weighting learning outcomes. Um, I would say there's nothing specific to graduate students. The idea of alignment holds at the graduate level and the undergraduate level. And it holds, it, it's holding in the webinar session we are doing with you right now. So when we did the design of this, we were also practicing backward design and making sure that what we were doing was aligned. So there's nothing specific really for graduate courses. And I see that we're at 1029. So I'm going to toggle back to the slides because we always like to end with this one and remind everybody about the importance of stretching our bodies after sitting for such a long time. So with that, I think we wrap things up and say thank you very much to everybody for joining us today. Uh, we hope that you'll be able to join us this afternoon as well for the uh, connection opportunity where we will have those three questions and you will be able to select the group that you would like to join and have that discussion. So Jenny, I don't know if you have any parting words. I think just to, to thank everyone once more for engaging in such, you know, in such a thorough way, uh, both in the breakout rooms and in the chat today. And we look forward to seeing you this afternoon. Thank, thank you very much. You Thank you to our organizers. We appreciate it. Thanks very much, Catherine. Thank you very much for all. Uh, You're very welcome.